Welcome everyone to this latest episode of todebate.net. Today you will have a debate which will never ever end. It will carry on forever until I guess I guess the earth disappears or maybe not even like the universe like collapses. Right Dirk? How are you? Uh well, I'm I'm fine still. Um, not dead yet. <laughs> Do you have enough energy to carry on forever? I have uh, enough energy to carry on to the end of this debate. That's my next milestone, and then see from there. But that's the that's the very point. We will not have any end today. We're scaring. I, I know I'm scaring you guys on the on the uh, on the receiving end. You're listening to this, and you're wondering what is what the heck is he talking about? Always making jokes which nobody understands. He's only the one laughing about. But that's because our motion today is eternal life is desirable yes eternal life is desirable the flip of the coin has decided that i will be for the motion i'll be defending that and you dirk you will be against that you will say it is not desirable to have eternal life indeed i will and i go first and you go first indeed so whenever you're ready it's your turn dirk goes first and argues against the motion so, the motion is eternal life is desirable, and I will make a case against that. Why possibly could I be against eternal life? There are so many reasons, I don't know where to start. But start with a very pragmatic one, space and resources. If we live forever, that means we reproduce and uh, grow forever. And that means we eat up space and resources. So there is a limit to eternal growth and eternal life on this whole planet for the reason of uh, resource competition. So a very practical limit to that. And I would argue that if you combine uh, the human rights to reproduce and uh, live freely and decide your own faith with an endless life, that becomes nasty very quickly. So first reason. Second reason. Evolution. Evolution depends on change cycles. Now, that's the difference between a collective desirability for eternal life and an individual. Of course, as an individual, I don't want to die. I want to live forever. I personally find it very desirable to live forever. But I would argue as a species, as humans, that's the most stupid thing we can have because that means we, we stagnate. We won't change as much. We won't evolve as much. We will have a problem adopting. And uh, evolution really depends on a change cycle. And evolution doesn't care about my individual desires and needs. So I would say from a global uh, species perspective, actually, it's very desirable to, to have death in the, in the mix. And the third one is a philosophical one. Just very quickly, I go deeper into that in my next segment. Many, many aspects of human success and our progress actually depend on deadlines. They are called deadlines for a reason. We know that we have an end on this planet, so we try to accomplish things. So we structure our time in deadlines. If you have no end to your life, you have no reason for deadlines. So you, you, you're sleezing off, you're just hanging around, and what's the point? You know, 100 years, 200 years, 500 years, who cares when you finish your trip report? So um, I would argue for the very last reason that might be the most powerful engine we have for human progress. Therefore, I hope our audience joins me. I'm against the motion. It's not desirable to live forever. And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. One of the great miseries of being, of living, is losing those we love. And obviously, if they don't die, um, we don't have to go through that suffering of missing the people that we love. So I think that's a, a pretty compelling reason as to not to have to go through this. Um, and I would argue that whatever I say is, is under one condition uh, for etern eternal life to be desirable, and that's remaining healthy. Right? There's no point in remaining alive if you're not healthy or cannot enjoy life. So everything I say is under that condition. Desirable does not mean that one has to go for it, by the way. right? I'm personally in favor of euthanasia, for instance. Now Nowadays, euthanasia is in the cases of your body not being responsive or dying or having Alzheimer, and it's not even approved in most countries anyway. But you can imagine a new form of euthanasia or your suicide uh, where you don't have, where, which remains as an option. Right? So you, it is desirable, in my opinion, but you don't have to go for it. You may have reasons not to carry on living because maybe you're alone, maybe because you've had enough. 
and this will continue. People are depressed. Look at me. So um, everyone may have a different reason for eternity, and I can only share mine, which are obviously highly subjective. I cannot speak about everyone else. I can give you examples as to why it is desirable, but that doesn't mean it's, I can generalize to the entire population. Let me start with one example, and then I'll carry on in my second part, also by responding to your own arguments. I believe 123 million books have been published since Gutenberg um, invented the printing press. That's 120 million different books. Now, of course, none of them are very good, but in one lifetime, in one current lifetime, you can only read so much, maybe what, 2,000, 3,000 books at most. So I'm frustrated personally. I'd love to carry on reading and become wiser. Uh, and I'll get back to your point about evolution, but maybe we don't need to evolve. We just need to become wiser or just be happy. So just the fact that there are so many books I will not have an opportunity to read already frustrates me. You don't have enough of many current lifetimes to go through even a tiny sliver of all these books. So yes, eternal life is desirable, and I'll get back to it in just three minutes. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Yeah, you make two very personal points, and I get those. Uh, it's hard to see loved ones go. Agreed. And you want to read all the books there are. And that's something I very much understand as well. Although I would argue that uh, after reading the first 110 million books, you might be tired of reading any more books. And that's exactly my counterpoint. Uh, many of these pleasures that you cited, the picture you have in your mind that you you lose out on on great literature and you cannot read everything you want to read and there is not enough time to dig through everything all these things this frame of mind depends on having an end in sight imagine you have theoretically the whole lifetime of the universe at your disposal to read all those books you might decide to not read so many at a time. You, know, you read slower, you, you maybe slack off every now and then, and all of a sudden it becomes uh, less desirable. Right now it's very desirable because you feel you're on a clock. And I think that makes a huge difference. The personal aspect of it, I totally subscribe to that. Uh, I, I think that's the main reason why people feel it's desirable to live eternally. But there's another aspect to it. You mentioned living healthy life. Yes, that's one aspect to it. The other one would be happiness. And again, very philosophical point. Uh, a lot of happiness depends on your impression that this may be a rare occasion that you may have just the time of your life now and you met the one special person in your life and you have that one moment you try to not let slip and all these things. All these feelings, all these impressions depend on having an end in sight. Now, if you, if you have an eternal life, these things, they lose meaning. You know, after the first 100,000 years, you don't even remember your first kiss. Some people don't remember after 20 years. So it loses, uh, it loses meaning and it loses sense and you lose something of it which is very important, which is humanity. Your humanity is lost in the process. So on an individual level, it may be desirable. Even that I disagree with because I, I bet that even if you're living a healthy, eternal life, you get to the point that you, f you find it undesirable. And then maybe people start using, uh, euth oh, I cannot pronounce that, euthanasia, kill themselves. Maybe people kill themselves then and may even have a right to that. But, you know, that throws you back to base one. Then you have not an eternal life anymore. Then people kill themselves, maybe. And you have to live with the fact that a loved one person may just go all the same. So, um, no, it's not desirable. Um, not going into any dystopian futures, um, talking about power, talking about all the things I might come up with. I'm just for the pure fact that uh, as a human, I like to be happy on the way and I like to have ups and downs in order to uh, cherish life. Next up, Sebastian. Let's hear it. Do we stop? Because um, what's happening now is research on making people live longer. Right? We've, the life expectancy has gone from, what, 36 years old a century or 150 years ago to the life expectancy that we know now. So where's the limit? So you basically, if we push your reasoning, basically we should stop doing any research in that sense. Um, beyond, by the way, the research on making lives healthier. 
Uh, you mentioned in your first piece about reproduction, there's not enough space and you have too many people. Well, that's my point, actually, which is about, well, space exploration. Right? Don't you want to see what, whether we actually manage to go to other planets? We'll have space. right? If we have time, we have the incentive also to explore other things. And I don't believe people need deadlines. You could also say people are kind only because they believe in an afterlife. Case in point. Right? You have atheists, you have people who do not believe in any God or afterlife. They're still kind people. They don't expect a reward. So people have different ways of dealing with innovation. It doesn't have to be uh, linked to a deadline. Uh, also, by the way, the trend is having less and less children. The more educated you are, uh, either more you read, uh, in a way, you have less children. So actually, I don't worry too much about the space on the planet and resources. We're becoming more and more efficient um, on that aspect. And you say it can become nasty. I think it's going to be fun if we have more people and they fight each other. Come on. Otherwise, we'll have nothing in the news. So, yes, it's going to be interesting to have an old, very old Dirk and fighting against a very old Sebastian and debating in like 10 million years about some random topic. I think it's going to be exciting. And, yes, you have a concern for the species. And you say individually you're all for it, but it's be selfish. Like, I don't care about the species. Like, when I die although I'm immortal, but assuming I'm, I, I, will, I will die, I don't care what happens after me. Right? Like in my own personal case, I'm going to be extreme. I don't have children. Now, of course, the people I know, I don't want them to die and suffer, but basically I'd be happier in a way if I had a guarantee that the world would disappear after me, that I have nothing left to regret to try again because everything dies after me. So it sounds very selfish, but think about it. Think about what it means um, on, a, on a personal level. Now, I have other arguments, and let me have my last minute around this. Um, we'd probably avoid making the same mistakes again, all over again. I think the reason why history sometimes repeats itself, at least as the expression goes, is because we don't have this memory of what happened, uh, whether it's the Second World War or previous wars. Um, I think we'd actually be benefit from uh, a, an evolution perspective since you brought up that point. Also, it's fantastic from a capitalistic perspective. Workers would not have to train them again. They would keep improving their skills. You'll just employ them forever. Uh, and you don't have to have an eight-hour eight workday, by the way. You can make it easier. But if we live in this economy, you can just keep on um, using them. And uh, one more and one last argument. Would you really want to die and miss on that latest iPhone? Really? No, you will be just damaged mentally if you die before having the latest iPhone. This is my, my groundbreaking argument. Yes. Eternal life is desirable. Final statements. Dirk goes first. Your last argument was precisely why I think it's not desirable. Because I stopped caring about the latest iPhone actually a couple of years ago. And I certainly cannot picture a world that goes on for a couple of thousand years where I have to buy another iPhone every year. So, uh, right, right. Case in point, I think things get boring, and uh, everyone around you who's older than you will give uh, will will agree with that. Second thing, the arguments you made actually point to dystopia. So, first off, yes, we we are researching eternal eternal life and uh, eternal health life, but it will be available to people who can afford it. And having an eternal life to be working for those who can afford it, it will, won't do anything good for, for the, the memory of the species. Third off, actually, uh, I argue that people will forget history just the same. People already forget history just the same. Um, even if you lived through that, uh, you, you forgot what you did uh, last, last year for, uh, in summer vacation. I think it's overly idealistic and optimistic to assume just because you live forever, you remember forever. And there are very real limits to that. Also, don't let, let's not forget that um, being around forever, and that means for, maybe for everyone, let's be totally utopian, means the idiots stick around forever too. And I'm not sure if that's a good thing. <laughs> so I hope our audience will join me in, uh, well, uh, disagreeing with you. And basically, no, it's not desirable. I, it's desirable to have a long, healthy, happy life, but eternal life, it's not desirable. Sebastian. Idiots will stick around, it is true, but so will women who break my heart. And in that case, the good thing about life is that nothing or almost nothing is over until you die. 
And it's very difficult for me to not have hope otherwise. So I continue hoping because I am alive, because I know she is alive and I want to have her love back. And that's a very personal and true story. Um, so I'm sorry, I will have to bring this up. But the main argument here is, as I said at the very beginning, is that you don't want to lose the ones that you love, your children, your because things can happen, your parents, your brothers, your sisters. So I think this is one of the most difficult things that we go through in life. Now, it's, we go through it anyway, indeed, but I think it's would be nice to avoid that and live more happily. But the main argument, and that's the one that you cannot respond to since I'm closing this debate, is that you will not want to miss the last episode of Star Wars. So yes, eternal life is desirable just for that. You will want to have an opportunity to watch that latest episode. That that would be a debating topic, right? Is it worth living forever to watch Star Wars over and over again? I, I, <laughs> no, I am not doing this debate. No. <laughs> No, I do. I do. I hope I, I do add enough serious arguments so that I can have the fun aspect and linking to our previous debates. Yes. In case, yes, and maybe we should have this on the record, by the way. In case you have not realized, I mentioned Star Wars only because our previous recording, our previous episode is about Star Wars. So if you have not listened to this episode, please go back to the website, to your podcast uh, feed or app, and you will see that our previous debate was about Star Wars. You will get the references. I make a lot of hidden references, but I love yeah, to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a multi layered like personality. Can't imagine what the, what tr you turn into if you had a uh, thousand years of suffering. Uh, I, I go through <laughs> enough suffering as it is. So it's multi-layered suffering indeed. Um, anyway, so what's my your point, real and sense? there was also a plug to our first debate about space exploration. Yeah, I know this. I know this. Amazing. If you have your whole life, you can actually go to all those miserable airless planets out there and uh, discover over and over again that we may well, have just maybe the only where we interesting can, place. This is maybe where we can send all your idiots. Yeah, can Maybe. we start now? <laughs> we can start now, sure. I, I and you don't need fact, eternal life for sending people, uh, idiots to space, <laughs> right? It's like... Uh, okay. All right. Thanks for listening. Once again, please remember to vote. You know, this thumbs up, thumbs down on the website to know who convinced you the most for that debate. If you have comments, if you have suggestions of additional arguments we could have used, likewise, use the website. You can go in the commenting section of each episode. And don't forget, you can also add a rating on iTunes. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Dirk. It's always great fun uh, to debate with very serious arguments, obviously. Um, so that's it for me. Any last words? Yes, for those of you who can't wait for the next iPhone to hit the shelves, maybe then you listen to this podcast on your iPhone. Maybe then you go to the iTunes store and leave us a rating there. We really mm, appreciate nice. it. That, that helps nice a lot. Time. By the way, I've never touched an iPhone in my life, so I have actually no clue <laughs> whether it's good enough or not. But so I You should do that arguments. before you die, because you never know when you're dying. I'm, I'm not going to die. Mm. Yeah, my, my sample size also. 100% of my data points so far indicate that I'm, I'm living forever. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you said that. I like it. <laughs> All right. Okie dokie. Thank you very much, everyone. Stay tuned. Bye. Bye.